A recent survey by Delta Poll revealed that 47% of the public want the next monarch to be the Duke of Cambridge. This gave William a 20-point lead over Prince Charles, who only 27% of people want to be the next monarch. A further 18% said neither should and that the monarchy should be abolished, while 8% said they did not know. However, Mr. Paxman destroyed the view that William should be the next monarch with a very simple argument during an interview with US TV host Charlie Rose. Mr. Rose asked whether the Prince of Wales will ever be king, and Mr. Paxman gave a strong, yes, adding that it will be when the Queen dies. He added, I don't think she will abdicate, she will die and in the fullness of time, Charles will succeed. People sometimes say, well maybe it would be better to skip a generation, not have Prince Charles's because he's a controversial figure, maybe, and have it go down to William. If you do that, well, why should it be William? Why not be anyone at all? Once you deviate from the principle of the thing, however absurd it may be, once you deviate from it, you could have anybody. In essence, Mr. Paxman argued that once you deviate from strict inheritance rules, there is no reason to follow the line of succession at all. In other words, in a hereditary institution you must follow the hereditary line or there is no logic or reason to the whole thing. The Delta Poll survey also asked the public whether they think the Queen should abdicate. While 40% believe the Queen should remain in her position until she dies, 27% said they believe she should abdicate if her health fails and a further fifth of people said she should abdicate in good health. Mr. Paxman also explained why he believes the Queen will not abdicate. He said that the Queen believes she has made a covenant with God and that her position is therefore a religiously anointed one. Believing this as she does, she cannot abdicate and break her vow. This is in contrast to the Dutch royal family, who tend to resign and pass on the role of monarch to their eldest child. Mr. Paxman said, the Dutch have an arrangement by which you can retire from the job, but the Dutch are fantastically practical people. The Queen believes, if you look at the little black and white footage of the coronation of the current Queen, you think you see everything, you don't see the key moment, which is the moment when she is anointed. And she believes that in the moment of anointment, you don't see it because it was never filmed and it wasn't filmed because she wouldn't allow it to be filmed, she believes that in the moment of anointment, she entered into a covenant with God and that this is therefore a religiously ordained role that she has. And it's therefore impossible that she will resign. Now, I may be proved spectacularly wrong tomorrow, I find it unimaginable though. The Queen, 95, has already returned to work after the loss of her beloved husband Prince Philip, who died at the age of 99 last month. The Duke of Edinburgh himself retired at 96, but the Queen Mother continued until just weeks before she died. The Queen takes her coronation oath very seriously, but her apparent lifelong commitment dates back even further. In a speech on her 21st birthday that was broadcast live on the radio around the world, she promised to serve for her whole life. On April 21, 1947, she said, I declare before you all that my whole life, whether it be long or short, shall be devoted to your service and the service of our great imperial family to which we all belong.